Okay, there's, um, for the next couple of weeks, we're going to be doing individual assignments, just learning different little techniques and tricks and tools that you can use to sketch. And then after we do that for a couple of weeks, then we're going to start another assignment like we did the drill assignment. But we're going to do uh, an upright vacuum cleaner, and but we'll, it'll be digital this time. So we'll go through the steps of designing a product. But what we're going to learn right now is special lighting effects. Um, there's some tools in Photoshop that are kind of fun to play with that can give you uh, very dramatic lighting effects. So this is uh, on D2L in session 18. So I'm going to go through these and then I'm just going to show you uh, how to do it. So when you're doing preliminary concept sketches, you don't have to do this. Um, maybe you would do this in the second round of sketches where you're wanting to dramatize or show off some of your ideas after you've already developed some ideas. You pick some that you like a little bit more and you want to try to uh, get the boss to notice them when they're on the wall or something. So this strong lighting uh, technique might be something that you would want to use. Uh, this is some student work from a previous class. But you see that there's a very strong light source. The shadows have been put in to reflect where the light's coming from and high contrast. And we all know contrast is yeah. contrast is king. Or queen if you want to be socially politically correct. <laughs> Here's some more student work. This was just a regular sketch, and all this strong lighting that you see here, except for the added shadow, uh, was done in Photoshop. So you pick, um, there's a whole bunch of different lighting effects here. The default one is on right now, but I 
could have uh, flood light. Let's say some of your products be appropriate to put a flood light on them. And then with this tool here, I can control where the light is coming from. Uh, I should be able to. So you see how I can I can change the light direction and with floodlight is a soft light. So like uh, maybe I want to dramatize the lights coming from the lower left. sitting on a table or a desk or on the ground, then after you pick your lighting, you're probably going to want to put a shadow going out away from the light source, which obviously is not appropriate on an airplane, it's up in the air, but some of you will probably want to do that. In the examples on D2L, a lot of them have that. But I'm going to go back and play with this again just to give you one more uh, example, and then you guys go, uh, go play. It's Filter, render, lighting effects. And I, the one I just used was a floodlight. Okay. I'm going to try the blue Omni this time. And this time I'm going to make it come from above. It seems to be taking a long time to, for Photoshop to pick it up. bit much.
this is this is actually very useful um, on products where you really want to bring focus to something. You can change the lens type here. You can change the brightness. Uh, but it's just like lens flare on a camera. And some of the examples that uh, are on D2L, you see these lens flare circles. And it's very similar to an effect that happens with a camera. Okay, so Take the time now, bring in a file that you want to play with for this assignment. Start playing with the lighting. After you've got familiar with some of the lighting, <coughs> then I'm going to come back on here and show you uh, how to make a glow light or beam and a beam light. I think this the first. Um, Some of these examples have glow lights and beam lights, some of them don't. This one has uh, glowing lights. It's also used the lens flare. You see the lens flare on this one? And it probably used the floodlight coming from the left and then they added the shadow going to the right. Does that look like fun? Okay, go play. So I used uh, the polygonal lasso tool to create, let's say I want to put another beam light off of this other wing. Beam lights generally spread out a little bit, although if they're really focused beam, they don't have to spread out, they could just stay a beam. But I'm making this look like it spreads out a little bit. And then I just fill that with white. <coughs> and generally you'd want it to be a little bit brighter at the source and get a little less bright as it goes away from the source. So it's maximum brightness right at the source. And then I just paint over that, uh, whoops. That was a bit strong. Knock down this so I can build it up. So I've got that central core of bright light. And then I'm <coughs> kind of like blurring outside of that to, of course it looks better on my computer than it does on that screen. Okay, so there's beam lights that are projecting out into the night. Okay. Now, glowing light. Let's say I just drew this little light on top of the airplane here. Um, I'm zoom in on that, and I want to make that a, a red glowing light. So I'm going to pick uh, red. Maybe this place, one place where I do want a pure, uh, pure color. Basically, I'm just going to uh, airbrush a glow around that. To me, that's the, that's the simple, easy way. It's glowing up more than down because it is projecting up away from the light source. So that, that could be a glowing light that's on the... Uh, computer keyboard or a mouse or uh, a projector <coughs> that has indicator lights on it. And, uh, turn the lights off and see if it's any better. As usual, it looks better on my screen. <coughs>
this menu here, you can play with. I don't use it, but if you <coughs> if you create a line with a path, you can use outer glow. You can change the size of that glow. That's one of the ways you can do it with tool. But I just prefer to paint it on, just like I showed you. So this is really low tech, and it's familiar to me to do it that way. Make that like top light glow a little bit more. 